Well, not particularly too good. It's a, it's a weak colony right now. And my best guess is that uh, sometime in July, if it ever warms up, but usually it's warm by July, it'll be, it'll be strong <coughs> in about a month. And then maybe really strong in August, and then who knows? It's it's not it doesn't look great. I think if, I'll be lucky to get a harvest in sometime in the fall, or like sometime in September or October. Anyway, that's it. Here comes Winston the cat. There he comes. What are you doing, man? Picking your time, just chilling out. Oh, here he goes. And he's gone. There. Over here, I got chicken. Hey there, chicken. Over there, we got some bees. We got another cat. There she is, right? There, you can kind of see her there in the shade. Hey, Maple, there she comes. Yeah. Maple, Maple, unlike Winston, will actually come up to me and you know get some affection. Hey, Maple, what's up? I like your collar, Maple. It's looking spiffy. There you go. What are you doing? Yeah, totally different cat here. Whoops, who doing it? Yeah, you're doing good. He's a good cat. Oh, she sees me. I think she sees Winston. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, she's gonna go for Winston here. There he goes. And there they are off. I gotta clear off these, uh, clear out these pallets and all this junk. This really does look like a junkyard. Okay, so it's June 11th, 2017. It's 17 degrees Celsius, and this is one of the warmest days we've had so far in the past two months, or this year, really. And um, this colony started off with hardly any brood in May, um, not even a full frame of brood in the beginning of May. And uh, I gave them some pollen supplement, and uh, they took a little bit of it but then they just completely ignored it once the dandelions came out so I just tossed the pollen supplement and they've got tons and tons of honey so I haven't been feeding them any sugar syrup and I haven't, doing, I haven't been doing anything with them other than making sure that they have space and I reversed the hive uh, back in May and made sure that there was at least several frames of empty uh, drawn comb in the top <clears throat> so they're good to go and uh, I'm curious to see how they do because this colony spends a good part of the time in the shade or at least not in the sunshine as much as most hives I've got a rim uh, an inner cover <clears throat> and a moisture quilt on top and the moisture quilt still has um, chips in it but if it gets really hot I might just remove those chips Here we go. That's a 40 watt light bulb that I've got underneath my hive. My one hive that I'm keeping this year. And uh, it, um, you can see I've got it sort of, you know, I got wood up along the side of the, uh, of the pallet to keep the heat in a little bit, but it's not a great deal of heat because it's only 40 watts and most of the heat is dissipating at the bottom and on the sides and stuff like that. But it's just enough heat that I think it'll just seep through into the hive just so that the inside of the hive isn't completely frozen because it's um, halfway through June now and it's it's been warmer in November most of the time. It's just so cold and uh, we've had a few days that maybe we're above 15 degrees Celsius but generally it's 10 degrees Celsius or less. The bees are getting out but it's just so cold that they're just not, it's not a large colony and I just 
they're just not expanding. They're not. They're not. <clears throat> they're not going to town like they normally would if it was a. Uh, if it was warm weather, so um, I've even considered painting the hive black for these cold June months that we were, we're having. If this becomes a regular thing, uh, normally I wouldn't even consider black because a, a, a hive would just cook if it was black. In the winter, for, fine, you'd use black wrap, but in the summertime, to actually paint it black would be just like you know overheat and kill, basically cook the bees and. Uh, but I've even cons I've considered that because it's just been so cold. I just want to give them as much warmth as they can get when they can, because most of the time they're just not getting out the forage. Not really. There's no nectar flow on the go on the go because this is so cold that we that they're just the nectar just doesn't get soft enough or warm enough to flow. And all we've got is uh, right now is uh, uh, alder bushes, bruce, spruce trees, not spruce trees, but uh, birch trees, which is a dry pollen. And a little bit of stuff from the dandelions, but not a lot from the dandelions. So it's really hard going right now. Um, so that's why I've got this light bulb thing on the go. And we'll see what happens. <clears throat> see how well that works. But yeah, it's been tough. Um, so I just took a look at this hive and um, I can see a few frames down below and there was about two frames of brood in the top and I, I put an empty frame between them so they're, they're spread out, the bees are spread out over one, two, three, four, five, about five frames right now, still lots of honey and plenty of empty frames on the go. But I put an empty frame in the middle, I had some, I brought out some empties over there just to uh, slide them in if I had to pull out some honey but I didn't need to and, uh, and that's it they're not great um, they're like only two frames of brood in the bottom and the top and I don't know how much in the bottom I, I assume there's more in the bottom but it's not exploding yet but um, they're getting there and uh, you know maybe a month from now they'll be in good shape So these returning foragers were got a little bit disoriented, but you can see they're bringing in plenty of pollen. Probably not much nectar, um, but I think that's still dandelion pollen overall. And uh, so yeah, they've got a, a 60 watt light bulb hidden underneath the hive that I turn on um, for heat when it's cold. And today is probably the first warm day we've had in several weeks. And um, so the setup for this hive is, is just the two deeps. There's some uh, drawn comb in the bottom, but most lots of honey everywhere. And I didn't look in the bottom, but I looked in the top, and the top has uh, about two frames of brood. And I saw I put an empty, empty uh, frame in the middle, draw, just drawn comb to give the queen more room to lay, so that they'll fill that in. And um, I've got a rim on top of it, then an inner cover, flat inner cover. Uh, with a hole in the middle and I got uh, a moisture quilt full of um, wood chips on top for a little bit of ventilation and suck up some moisture. Right now I don't think they need that extra ventilation and I'm keeping in the uh, moisture, not the, I'm keeping in the wood chips so that um, just for insulation because it's been so cold. And I've got the bottom entrance reduced uh, and I'm going to keep that reduced until <clears throat> kill that ant until they're they're crowding both entrances until it's obviously they can defend themselves. But right now they're still a little bit uh, they're just they're just basically filling up to the the middle frames. But they need to expand all through all the frames before I you know expand uh, open the bottom entrance. Even then, I don't even know if you need the bottom entrance open. But once it gets really hot and there's lots of bees in there, I'll just empty the moisture quilt and remove the inner cover so they'll have f full ventilation. Here's a quick video to demonstrate how I store my honey. Um, I think the key to storing honey, as far as I can tell, is, is ventilation so that um, 
the frames of honey can dry and and not build up mold. So <clears throat> what I have here is I got a I got a solid bottom border, just a piece of plywood. But on top, these 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 frames of honey. If I can find one, oh, there's a heavy one. And there's lots of honey going on there and over there. And I got several of those frames <clears throat> left over from a dead hive. And they're good to have around. So I just put them in this deep and then I store them, I cover them up with an empty moisture quilt so nothing can get in there, mice or anything, no, no mice or whatever, but it's fully ventilated right here. And so it's, just, it's constantly just drying out that honey. It might attract, you know, bees and things, but they can't get at it. So it's, uh, that's how I store my honey. All right, it's July 25th, and uh, it's going up to, well, it's 20 degrees right now, and um, it's about 11 o'clock, and I just checked on the, this jar feeder, and that right there, it was, it was basically empty, so I put a new one on, slightly larger jar feeder, and they're sucking it down. So I hopefully they're using that syrup to build that, uh, that drone, empty drone comb, uh, or that filling that empty frame I, I added a couple days ago. So next weekend I'll pull this hive apart and take a look at that empty frame that I put in and with any luck there'll be uh, a whole new frame of uh, freshly drawn comb on one of the frames. Which is always nice to see. Very pretty sight. Um, but right now I'm just gonna leave them like this. I spilled some syrup there so I'm just gonna leave this open until they clean up that syrup and then I'll Put the top back on and off they go. <clears throat> and I've got rid of that light bulb so they're just uh, around their own for heat, which is probably a good thing. Yeah, here we go. Okay, it's about 18 degrees Celsius and um, it's a bit of a chill in the air and it's cloudy today. There's rain coming in. The bees are out about a little bit and I'm walking past this dogberry tree and I can smell the, the flowers on it now. Um, yesterday the, or the day before the flowers were just starting to come out but now they're definitely in bloom. And the smell is... I'm not sure what the smell is. It's a sort of a... It's not an unpleasant smell, but it almost smells sort of... I don't know. Kind of rotten, maybe? But I don't know, I can't pin it down. But anyway, it's not a horrible smell. It smells nice enough. Um, but And the bees are starting to notice it. Here's a bee right now. It's starting to notice it. Whoop, hello. There we go. So that's a... That's a bee, whoop, hello, on a dogberry tree, flower. So this is good. Hopefully they'll get something out of this. And um, the only thing I've noticed, though, is uh, it's a bit odd. Um, some of the flowers, some of the, some of the, uh, the, the leaves have these dots on them, these spots on them. And some of the uh, leaves are dead. There's these sections right here where they're just sort of, dead. They're dying and shriveled up. And, uh, and I look around and you can see that's close to where, where these, these dots are, or these spots are. So I'm wondering if there's some sort of fungus or something getting onto the tree. Hopefully the flowers will be in bloom. See there's another one right there. It's sort of dead. But hopefully the bot, again this is, I can see a fair there's one over there too that's half dead. And oh yeah, a whole bunch. So the, at the edges of the tips of a lot of the branches, the, uh, the 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 leaves and some of the flowers are just completely shriveled up. Though overall, I think the tree is healthy, but something's up on the go there. I don't know if it's just frost or or what, but uh, you can really smell it today too. It's like a uh, whew, really fragrant. 
and this, which is surprising because I thought it'd be more fragrant on a sunny day. But anyway, hopefully the bees will find this and uh, make some honey because last year um, the dogberries, for whatever reason, didn't bloom at all, and I didn't get much honey last year either. So there's a lot of things that weren't in bloom last year because of because of some weird weather stuff. Um, so yeah, we'll see. But uh, hopefully this will stay in bloom for a while and something good will happen. Yeah, that's it. That's my observations. The, the trees are in bloom. Uh, the smell is uh, whatever it is. It's nice. Nice enough. And, uh, and there's some spots on the leaves and they're kind of dying. But anyway... Something else I've noticed, and I'm going to try to zoom in digitally. There's a lot of debris uh, on the bottom board. And that debris is from uh, the bees opening capped honey. They chew out the, uh, the wax caps, and it releases a lot of debris on the, on the floor of the, uh, of the hive. And so they're accessing that honey now. They're eating that honey, and I would assume they're using that honey to feed baby bees. They mix it with the pollen, and they create this thing called bee bread. And it's sort of like a baby food, and uh, high in protein, high in sugar. And uh, anyhow, all that debris is from that's bits of tiny bits of wax that they've taken off a lot of the uh, the wax capped wax that they have in the hive. So. I don't know what they're doing. I'm not checking the, I'm not really checking on them that closely, but anyway, that's what that's a sign of uh honey being opened up and I assume eaten. Okay. I'm going to take a quick look inside this hive. I got branches poking me in the face. I'm going to cut off some branches here. <clears throat> And uh, I have just some plastic rubber gloves for doing anal rectal examinations. And not much protection right there. I'm wearing a, a long sleeve shirt, but basically it's a t-shirt. And my, vet, my veil isn't covering my back and my neck. So there's not a lot of protection. If these bees wanted to get me, they, they can. <clears throat> So this could be a very short video if they're not playing nice. <clears throat> so what I'm checking here, yeah, I calmed them down a bit. What I'm checking here is to see if, um, to see if the bees, <clears throat> to see what they've done with that empty, uh, that empty frame I put in. But if they're in, if they're stingy or defensive in any way, I'm just out. Because I just don't, I have to put on a suit or something. I don't have a lot of protection on the go right now. <clears throat> so, this is just a bit of, bit of mist. With a bit of sugar. So, the mist and the sugar. A little sweet sugar will give them something to drink. They go, oh, hey, this tastes good. And I won't get alarmed by it. And the wet... Uh, rain coming down will just basically make the wings wet and sticky so they can't fly. And they should naturally react to the, the wet as if it is rain. Now the trick here is to open this baby up without not making too much noise. And so far so good. I might find a little bit of burr comb underneath this. I really hope they're in a good mood because if Oh yeah, okay. <clears throat> Lots of propolis. We're really gluing things up today. Well, or lately, not just today. I might put a new uh, inner cover on after this. <clears throat> so this this frame right here, the light-colored one, that has 
2017 written on it. That's the uh, that's the empty frame, and I don't know if they're working it. Let's see. Nope, nothing. Well, that's not great. It's not a strong hive. Is basically what, what this means. So I'm going to put. But we should have a nectar flow on the go right now. We've got a lot of dogberry, and everything's coming into bloom right now. <clears throat> Here we've got a lot of uh, a lot of pollen. It's not much brood. So I'm going to slide that over, and I'm going to put the empty frame closer to the brood nest. Maybe right smack in the middle of the brood nest. So right now the bees are pretty chilled. They could easily. I don't. I, I have gloves on, and and there's there's no point in having these gloves. They could easily. They're going to get me if they want to get me. Okay. Well, we've got some some brood. We've got some queen cups. I'm basically checking those queen cups for uh, for swarm cells, for for larva. Ooh. Honey dripping out, or nectar dripping out. Queen has laid some eggs on this frame. Let's see if I can spot her. Give the queen more room to lay. All right, here we go. Here's a full frame of brood. It's old brood, so it's gonna. It's nice and dark, so it's gonna hatch out soon. Same on this side. I'm going to take a look at one more frame, and then I'm going to stick that frame in the middle, hope for the best. Oh, that was a defensive bee, this bee's a, bee a bit defensive, go. There's a good chance I, oh jeez, I just killed the bee. There's a good chance that I'm going to get stung. If they want to be, if any of these bees want to get defensive, I'm in trouble. And I'm running out of running out of water spray. All right, let's take a quick peek. Please don't sting me. Okay, this one's light. All right, it's got some hatched out brood and some young brood. You can tell the brood is young because the the caps are lighter. But the queen is all these the queen is laid all over this, so it's looking okay. She's, every cell is full right now. Every, I don't know if you can see it at all, but every cell has a bit of grubs in there, which is basically little baby bees building up. I don't spot the queen, but I'm not going to worry about it. So I'm, I'm on just, this doesn't look like a crowded hive, so I'm going to put them all back together, except yeah, I don't need these these gloves. Here they are. Here's the foundationless frame that they didn't touch. So I'm gonna stick it right in the right smack in the middle of the uh, the brood nest, and hopefully they'll build on it. So it's not much of an inspection. I only pulled out what. Four frames, but uh, I'm hopeful that nothing bad is happening on this side of the hive, which I didn't check. That there's no super seizure, not super seizure cells, but no super, uh, no swarm cells. There, I noticed a couple queen cells hanging off some of these frames, so it's possible they could be over there, which means there probably is. But anyway, <clears throat> I, I don't think they're. Uh, they're at risk of swarming. Right. It's always good to bang and vibrate things around the hive to uh, agitate the bees, get them in a bad mood, just like I did then. Let's put a new 
Hope we all get stung. But uh, it shows you that you can. It shows you that you can uh, probably do this without gloves. I, I didn't. If you're careful and uh, you should be able to do little minimal things like that without without worry about getting, getting stung. So that's that. Let's just take it off. I didn't do anything. The, the, the setup is exactly the same as it was before except I've got a new inner cover. It's a big thick inner cover and it's got less cracks underneath so they're not going to fill up fill up the cracks with all this stuff here, which is glue, it's propolis, and they're basically sealing in the seal, they're just making a seal around the, the edge, which makes it difficult for me to take it off, so I, uh, I put a new one on, but you know what, I probably should have just kept it there, no big deal. Anyway, so they're not, they're not I gave them some syrup about a week ago, I think, hoping that they would draw out that foundationless frame in the middle, they didn't. So, um, I'm not sure what to think about that. Um, maybe they just, they decided to build up more baby bees instead. But now I've got that frame right smack in the middle of the brood nest between two frames of brood. So hopefully that'll motivate them to, to draw some comb on it. And uh, it's possible there could be some swarming going on in this, in this hive, but I don't think so. I think... Uh, I'll just leave them alone for the, for the weekend, and after that, I'll take another quick look, and if they're still doing okay, I'm, I'm, re I'm really have no intention of digging into the hive at all. I'm just going to put a honey super on top, and forget about it, and let them sort it out. Uh, there you go, very minimal, basic beekeeping. Gets the job done. You're basically making room for the queen to lay. Always make room for the queen to lay. That's 90% of all beekeeping is is right is is making room for the queen to lay and it saves sol solves 90 percent of your problems right there but uh yeah so these guys are on the uh, the inner cover and they're they're wondering why are we outside when we were just inside and but they'll eventually figure it out and crawl back in or fly back in as long as the queen isn't there <coughs> But if the, if the queen was there, they'd be all, they'd be following her. Yeah, they're okay. Anyway, so that's it. And I didn't get stung, so I'm happy. Um, it's supposed to be about 25 degrees today. I think it's about 22 degrees right now. Uh, dogberry trees are out in full bloom and you can smell them everywhere. I don't know how much the bees go for it because they don't seem to be all over the dogberry, but... Other things, clover is coming out now, lupins are out, other things are coming out now. So right now, this it's what's called, some people call it the honey flow or the nectar flow. And with enough natural nectar coming in and pollen, they should be able to, you know, work it out on their own. So no, no, no more syrup for them. And uh, hopefully there's nothing bad happening in there. I don't, I, I, could, I could dig into it, but I really don't want to. So we'll just see how it goes.